Happy Monday, y'all. Josh of Severe Weather. Hope y'all had a great weekend. We have got some more tropical potential development down the road that I'm going to take a look at here, both in the uh, Gulf and Caribbean, as well as in the Western Pacific. I'm also going to talk a little bit about uh, some changes in the weather coming to the United States with the threat for some severe weather likely to start ramping back up here farther north and east as we get on into the next couple of weeks. So this is kind of more of a long range video here, but my shirt is disappearing. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, anyway, here is the area of potential concern. Now this is a ways off still, a couple weeks down the pipe, uh, but you can see um, a lot of models are starting to hint at maybe something trying to get going here in the Western Caribbean and maybe tracking into the Gulf. Uh, so if you are planning on vacationing in Florida um, and the Southeastern United States and maybe Cuba, uh, later on in the month of June, certainly this is something you'll just want to keep an eye on at this point. Nothing that's developed at this point, so we've got a ways off. And the next week looks like it's going to be pretty quiet across the tropical basin uh, with no development expected. Not a very favorable time for that to happen. We did have a weak storm in the Gulf at the end of last week. That was Arlene. Uh, the remains of that have already passed east of the Bahamas, and we do have some flare up here, but nothing really of major concern. Uh, as wind shear in here is still very strong. We've got an upper low <clears throat> that's spinning over the Louisiana coastline, and that's going to bring an enhancement of moisture uh, to the uh, central and eastern Gulf states as well as Florida. And behind this, there have been a couple of uh, upper level features that have tracked from northwest to southeast over Texas and pretty nasty storms yesterday around the Brownsville area. Last night, 80 mile an hour wind gusts, a lot of nasty weather in the New Orleans area and storms in the Dallas area. So very active across Texas, but nothing that's going to get anything tropical going when it moves into the Gulf. We're just looking at storm tracks that continue here with high amounts of wind shear. Those produce strong winds aloft. In the uh, eastern U.S., we've got another trough digging south, upper level feature spinning over the Gulf of Maine. Um, that has shut down the record heat we had last week, actually brought some record low temperatures to Maine here on Sunday. We were in the mid-90s last week. Now we're barely getting past 50. Man, what a shock that is to the body. Uh, the rest of the Atlantic is not looking busy at all. We've got waves coming across Africa, uh, but a lot of strong westerlies here are killing those off as they move into the main development region down in here. That's why we don't really see any, uh, any kind of flare-ups at this point. And that's nothing uncommon for June. We see that quite a bit where the Cape Verde season uh, really doesn't get going for at least another month to month and a half. Um, as these impulses come across the Southern Caribbean, though, we certainly have to keep an eye on them in the Western Caribbean if wind shear does weaken. Uh, and there's a flare up on the ITCZ, that's the intertropical convergence zone on the Pacific side, uh, but nothing really favorable here on this side. So that's the area I'm going to be watching for you guys. Um, we've talked about El Nino in several videos here. The number continues to climb as the Pacific warms up. Uh, the ONI, the Oceanic Nino Index, is up to 0.73. That means the average of the uh, Pacific waters is now running 0.73 degrees above average Celsius. So um, it's not officially yet in El Nino, uh, but obviously the trend is there. So we are probably heading in that direction here this summer. Uh, here is a look at what's called the MJO. This is a Madden-Julian oscillation. And we look at this to see where, uh, where things are cycling through across the globe. Typically, um, right now we are in a phase eight. That means um, development um, in the uh, Eastern Pacific and in the Gulf certainly is a little bit more favored. But as we get into one and two, we actually have a better chance at seeing more favorable conditions for development that could potentially impact the U.S., especially towards phase two. And according to the Australian model, it looks like we get there around the 20th of June and stay in that phase towards the end of June eventually cycling into a less favorable phase of three and four uh, towards the end of June. So there is a window that's going to open up for some tropical development here, uh, at least uh, better conditions and a higher likelihood for that um, after about the 15th or so of June. The next 10 days or so don't look super favorable. Here's a look at the uh, surface temperatures, and they are running warm over um, the eastern Pacific side as well as the western Caribbean. Um, and obviously in El Nino here, you can see the brighter colors favoring above average temperatures, the El Nino in place. Um, this time last year, we had the cooler colors in the La Nina, but now we've shifted to the warmer. And this uh, temperature pattern right now, actually, um, I, I looked over and looked at some researchers, and it actually is more in line with the year 1899. So I'd mentioned 1951 based on a forecast 
Um, that was one analog year, but 1899 was another one. This is actually the reanalysis of the surface temperatures. And you can see negative PMM, that is uh, below average temperatures off the California coast and the Baja. Um, this, in this particular case, we actually had below average temperatures over the Eastern Atlantic, Central and Eastern Atlantic, or Central Atlantic, but well above over the Eastern Atlantic. So obviously some differences still, but uh, negative PMM, positive canary current, and an El Nino in place. So this is certainly uh, something to keep an eye on. This was uh, made in July, so they were starting on the cool side with respect to this year's averages over the Western Atlantic. But the uh, 1899 season was pretty active off the East Coast and across the Northeast Caribbean. Uh, the Gulf itself was not as active as many recent years. There was a system over the Eastern Gulf, but uh, North Carolina, um, Bahamas, east of Florida, certainly a lot of activity. And then, of course, near Bermuda as well. Uh, and a lot of big storms um, in this season. We had a, a very active, what's called an ACE. That's the accumulated cyclone energy for the season. It was about 50% above the average, mainly due to this extremely long lived storm here, which had a hurricane force winds with it for 10 days. But this is 1899. And the data from back then wasn't collected like it is today. So certainly this season could have been busier, uh, but we don't have uh, any framework for that really other than just going off of observations. I brought this up in my video the other day, but uh, water temperatures remain above average uh, over the canary current here running two to three degrees Celsius above average. That's a cool weather current that typically um, funnels cooler drier air down into here but the fact that it's already running hot above average means that we probably have a higher chance of seeing development out in here western caribbean has been warm for several years that continues to be the case closer to the coast we have cooler than average temperatures due to the trough we've had in the eastern u.s and we did have a tropical system here which also churned up a little bit of that cool water as well uh, arlene but you know certainly still above average it's june water temperatures are climbing this time of the year even if they're a little below average doesn't mean they can't be um favorable for a storm to develop so that's what i'm going to be watching for you guys here uh here's a look from weatherbell.com of the ensemble it's got a very wet pattern coming through cuba the yucatan channel and into florida um this rain that we're going to be dealing with it looks like it starts to get going around the 15th or 16th of june and then tracks up into the southern gulf um, the weekend of the 17th so father's day weekend maybe a tropical system or at least moisture in place and then that track recurves off to the north and east this is just one model run but then it is the ensemble from the european if we go to the run after it um, we see oh that's the 18z so it actually doesn't even go out that far but if we look at the zero z here we can see um, that that is not really showing up again. So it kind of a, so now you see it, now you don't kind of thing. If I go back to the uh, zero Z from yesterday, uh, it definitely has something in the Western Caribbean, but doesn't bring it up into the Gulf. So not a certainty at this point, but I mean, if you look at the GFS ensemble, you can see it's showing wetness here in the Western Caribbean as well. Um, this particular ensemble takes it all through the Bahamas and East. So not a slam dunk that we have a storm in the Gulf, but some of the models are starting to show that. In fact, I'll show you the GFS model. And um, let's go back to yesterday here, the 12Z run. And you can see as we go on into further on into time here, we've got some development here off of Honduras and Nicaragua on the 18th. And that tracks northwest towards the Yucatan. Where it goes after that, again, very uncertain. I don't try to make a forecast on a 16-day model run. Uh, but you can see it's got something down there. Um, the following run takes it up near the Yucatan and up into the southern and central Gulf. And if you extrapolate this beyond the 20th, it's probably heading towards Florida. But based on climatology, you don't typically have storms heading towards Louisiana in June due to the upper level flow. But that's something I'm watching for you guys. And then the following runs got it farther east, but it does have development in the Western Caribbean. And this looks like more of a potential threat to Florida. So again uh yes i'm showing you these models a lot of meteorologists will probably frown upon that but I'd rather you just be on the lookout for an area that i'm going to be watching to see if we have a consistent forecasting trend or not uh but something developing here in the western caribbean around father's day weekend and then maybe a track into the southern or southeastern gulf or maybe across cuba and east of florida so that's what i'll be watching for you guys at this point now we do have potential development as well here east of the philippines another system we're keeping an eye on this is Guam, so fortunately not going to be a Guam problem, probably not a Philippines problem, but in between the two, uh, we do have um, some development. We now have an invest um, 98W, and 
Uh, this one could get strong. Some of our uh, ensemble members take it into uh, typhoon status again. The next name on the list is Guchal, which is a Micronesian name for turmeric. Uh, I actually looked it up, but Guchal is the next name on the list. And in the next few days, it could be something that develops pretty quickly here. This is the Philippines and Taiwan. This is Japan. Uh, overall, it looks like a recurve. And if it is a recurving typhoon, that could impact us in the U.S. down the road. Uh, recurving typhoons tend to lead to stronger jet streaks, and those lead to faster winds aloft and an enhanced risk for some severe weather and more ample jet stream patterns. So we're dealing with the recurve coming in here next week from the last one, Mawar. This one could be more of an issue down the road towards the end of June, uh, depending on timing here. But the GFS does develop this slowly here tomorrow into Wednesday and does have a cyclone um, turning into a typhoon here towards the second half of this week. Fortunately, not an immediate threat to land. But you can see it's deepening pretty quickly here over these warm waters. Um, this is going to be just east of where Mawar tracked last week, so maybe about 150, 200 miles east of it. Uh, but it's got a pretty significant typhoon here and then recurving and staying south and east of Japan. So fortunately, at this point, not looking like a threat to land, but something we do need to watch in the U.S. based on how strong it could get and how that could impact the jet stream across the Pacific. Everything has um, a consequence to it here, even worldwide and even out in the Western Pacific. Uh, this is the HWARF, which is a tropical model. You can see it deepens the storm system east of the Philippines. This is Taiwan. Um, these are the uh, islands of Okinawa. And you can see, um, while it looks like it's going to head towards Okinawa, there's probably a recurve coming based on these lower pressures in here moving eastward. Uh, so that is uh, that is the next system to keep an eye on. Uh, in the Atlantic, uh, we don't see anything developing, just a big trough here in the Northeast, uh, impulses dropping down across the Great Lakes. These are going to lead to more active weather around our boundary here in the Carolinas and Georgia, especially active weather as well in the Gulf states and parts of Florida this week. That moves east. We have another trough that moves out of eastern Canada through the Great Lakes here next week. You can see um, this will lead to multiple disturbances tracking from the central plains into the Tennessee Valley in the southeast. We may be in for a stormier pattern with more severe weather in parts of the southeast. Um, that could impact some NCAA super regional games here next weekend uh, if you're a baseball fan. And that does cut off into an upper level low over North Carolina. That's going to lead to unsettled weather, more cloud cover, and cooler temperatures. Uh, as we get to the middle of the month of uh, June, uh, July. And you know, this this particular run tries to take it up the East Coast. We've got another disturbance behind it, uh, but a very ample jet stream track, no big ridge building in. In fact, we see pieces of energy coming across, which lead me to believe there'll be some severe weather over the plains and into the Ohio Valley uh, as we get towards the middle of the month of June. And here's a look at the GFS model. Um, this is from yesterday, and you can see big upper level low over California. Lots of energy coming through the southwest, so Texas is going to stay pretty active here. This is next weekend, big trough moving into the southwest. This ejects and moves northeast, so the plains should get pretty busy here uh, next week. And we see continued energy coming out across the plains. So Oklahoma, Kansas, North Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, we may be looking at more organized severe weather, maybe tornadoes uh, towards the second half of next week. And then you can see a ridge builds in and things get busier farther north. And this is where we have to keep an eye on potential derechos forming uh, across Nebraska, the Dakotas and Minnesota, and then tracking east. Uh, very fast wind flow aloft. This is probably the trough from Mawar, uh, Cyclone Mawar in the Pacific. It's now finally making its way through the central and eastern parts of the U.S., taking about three weeks or so to do that. And then here's a look at the supercell indices. And oops, this, this was running and then it slowed down on me. Here we go again. Um, and as we get beyond the weekend, um, we see things ramping up in Texas and Oklahoma around the 11th and 12th of the month of June. But here things get busier over Oklahoma, Kansas, North Texas here around the 12th, 13th and 14th, potentially several days of severe weather in this region. So again, it's it's a ways off. So this will probably will probably change at least the details, maybe not the overall um, pattern of things, but you can see some busier weather expected here getting into the Mississippi Valley, some needed rain in the forecast, but we may also get severe weather with it, unfortunately. Places like Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio here towards Father's Day weekend. And then that tracks south and east and more severe weather could follow it uh, beyond across Kansas, Nebraska, and the Dakotas. Um, here's a look at the potential for higher amounts of storm fuel, CAPE. 
as well as um, enough wind flow aloft here to maybe get some storms ramped up. And you can see picking up around Oklahoma and West Texas and the Tennessee Valley around the 12th and 13th. And then everything kind of shifts north and eastward towards um, the Ohio and the mid Mississippi valleys here around the 15th of June. So more active weather expected in here. The rain is needed. We've had a dry start to summer, but severe weather I think will accompany some of that rain and we could be in for some busier days here. Maybe some enhanced risks, maybe even a moderate risk at some point in here leading up to about Father's Day weekend. Temperature forecast, um, you'll see how cool it is in the east here. Let me see if I can make this easier for you guys to see. Cool in the east, cool in the southwest, and heating back up in the northwest here this week and western and central Canada. And that's going to be the trend right through next weekend. Um, we see some warming eventually coming uh, to the southern plains here around the 14th and 15th. And the southeast won't be as cold either by then. So we'll start warming up some and definitely hotter on the 15th for many. But look at what we see shifting here towards Father's Day weekend. Um, another trough in the east. Another trough in the southwest in between heat, humidity, and likely severe weather across this region as well. Here's precipitation chances. And you can see here um, over the next couple of days, we see uh, wet weather over uh, Atlantic Canada and New England. Some wet weather over the upper Midwest. Certainly the Rockies and High Plains stay wet. As we get to next weekend, though, pretty active across the southeast. Again, you can see a very big band of storms potentially here this upcoming weekend across Nebraska, shifting towards Missouri. And then early next week, the Tennessee Valley looks like it gets in on storms. The east turns wet again, especially the Carolinas, and Florida stays wet. And then beyond that, we see continued storm tracks over the upper Midwest, moving south and east over the, high, over the uh, periphery of that high pressure ridge. So very active weather pattern expected here. Again, I uh, really appreciate y'all's time again not time to cancel any vacations just keep an eye on things um, really all i try to do is give you guys some outlooks maybe some potential uh no need to to get all bent up about anything bent out of shape out of anything at this point but i do appreciate y'all's time i really do thank you so much for watching me here for helping my channel to grow and if you did enjoy this video and you're a first time or second time guest to my channel i would appreciate if you could consider subscribing as well uh, I thank you for your time, and I give all the glory to God who allows me to do this every day. He has called me through his son, Jesus Christ, to share the good news with everybody and to share the weather. That is my spiritual gift. Um, 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 15, or, <clears throat> sorry, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 56 to 58, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to our God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in the vein of the Lord. These are the good works that I've been called to do. I pray that you have good works that you've been called to do as well. And if you are a believer, I pray that you share that good news with other folks uh, by sharing the love and the victory that Jesus has given us. I wanted to share that encouragement with you because there are many days where I feel like I can be easily discouraged I can sin and then feel guilty and shame for it, but we have been given that victory through accepting Jesus Christ no matter what we do here, and that is eternal life. And I wanted to share that amazing news with you all because it is so important to me, and I pray that it is important to you as well. If you are not a believer, it's no judgment on you. I still think eventually you can turn to God and be victorious. I pray that that's the case. But if you're not, I don't want to beat you up for it either. That's that's not why I'm here. I'm here just to share that good news. So thank you all so much for your time. If you have any prayer requests or you'd like to pray for me, please uh, share those in the comments. Happy to talk about that to God. Thank you for your time. We'll chat with you again soon. God bless you.